Hello fellow YouTubers, and welcome to this Raw review for the week of October 13th, 2014. I'm just going to jump right in because that's how I usually do things, so. The show starts, Ambrose comes out, says he's going to beat Cena down with the pole, and that the contract is on the pole. <laughs> Didn't read that right. And then he's going to go beat Rollins inside the cell. Cena comes out, and Santa says Ambrose should use his two weeks to practice for Cena instead of running his mouth or something to that effect. Ambrose says don't treat him like a friend because Dean's wanted to knock Cena out for years. Seems about right. <laughs> Who hasn't? Triple H and Stephanie come out and say they're both afraid of each other, as in Dean and John are afraid of each other, and that's why they don't attack each other. And it's announced that there's a triple threat tag match. Cena and Ambrose versus the Usos and the Dust Brothers. And oh, let's, let's start the first match of the night. Fans want Stardust. I kind of thought that was odd. There was a chant for Stardust. Maybe he's from there or something. I don't know. There wasn't even a Gold Dust chant, which there should be if there's a Stardust chant if they're in their hometown. So I don't know. I thought it was odd. Fans absolutely lose their mind when Stardust attacked one of the Usos. It was crazy. Like, genuinely, I I was surprised. Because the audience was, like, all about Stardust. Anyway, Cena and Ambrose hit both of their finishing moves on the Dust Brothers. And they pin them to win the match. And it kind of made them seem weak. But, eh, whatever. It did what it was supposed to do. And, really, I'm fine with it. I like Stardust. I like Gold Dust. Don't really like the Usos, but it all balanced out. I'm not complaining. But then Triple H and Stephanie come out again, and Triple H suggests that the main event tonight be Cena versus Dean instead of saving it for Hell in a Cell. Okay, and just for the record, one sixth of the show already has been dedicated to this rivalry pretty much. His first 10 minutes was them talking. 20 minutes for the match, and then, well, it was like 15 minutes for the match, and then five more minutes for Triple H and Stephanie to come out. A lot of time dedicated to that. I was surprised. Anyway, there's another Divas tag match. It's Paige and Alicia Fox versus AJ and Layla. And backstage, AJ was talking to Layla, and she's like, I hate all the Divas, but I hate you the least. And I was like, sounds like the story of my life. <laughs> but um, Layla walks out on AJ, but AJ hits a Shining Wizard on Fox and wins with a Shining Wizard. I didn't know that was her finishing move, but it's kind of weird. It's like the Divas division has different rules in the male division because like you never see a match in the male division won by like a signature move or just a regular move. Like when was the last time you saw like a superplex and a match? I can't think of any time. Like, straight up. But anyway, um, then AJ runs after Layla and attacks her. And I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty brutal looking. I was, I was impressed. <laughs> but I guess what they're gonna do is they're gonna put the four most talented divas in a feud together. Paige, AJ, Alicia Fox, and Layla. I mean, that, that's, that's the way to do it. In my opinion. But anyway... Um, Triple H, Stephanie, and Orton are backstage, and Orton says that Seth is the future, but the future is so far away, and basically that he's the present. So, Orton said he'll take on the loser of tonight's match at Hell in a Cell. And then Stephanie says she likes his enthusiasm. So, that was pretty, pretty interesting, and I'm not going to complain. I like the idea, but we'll move on. Uh, there's another Bray Wyatt promo. It was pretty much the same as last week, so I'm not going to talk about it. There's Zolf Dickler versus Randy Orton, and Orton got a huge pop. I was surprised, because I know he's still a bad guy, and around this time last year, I, I would imagine he would have been booed. Big time. But for some reason, the fans are cheering for him. Seth Rollins comes out. And it was a, a really good match, because of course it was. Randy Orton, he, he's a really good worker. Even if people don't agree with that, he is. And Dolph Ziggler is, you know, he's Dolph Ziggler. Orton reversed a Famouser into an RKO, and I, I'm not even going to lie, it was crazy. 
He like caught him, held him up, dropped him, and then spun it into an RKO. It was the nicest looking RKO I've seen in a while. Like straight up, if I made a list today, top five RKOs. I guess I should pull back. Top five RKOs, it would have to be four or five. It had to be. Like, really. But anyway, Rollins comes into the ring after the match. Oh, I think Ziggler missed his cue to roll over. Because Orton laid on him like he was going to pin him. But Ziggler was still in his belly. Stupid things like that. Come on, Ziggler. If you ever going to make it to the main event, you got to do that. You got to do that. Come on. You can see Orton looked mad, but whatever. Then right afterwards we have Rollins versus Swagger, and of course Orton comes out. Interesting. And it's a good match. Rollins does a roll-up for the win, which kind of surprised me. And then Orton comes out and RKO Swagger slides right out. And then there's a standoff between them. It looked like there was going to be a confrontation. There wasn't. Why would there be a confrontation? There never is. Renee Young's backstage, she interviews Dean Ambrose, and Dean says he won't be friendly to Cena, basically. He says Seth and Cena are on their highway to hell, which is funny, because it's another ACDC song, and his finishing move is Dirty Deeds, which is another ACDC song, which, that is pretty clever, I suppose. Then, right afterwards, we had a big show interview, and he said he's going to smash Rusev's glass jaw. People knock on Rusev for being bad at interviews. I was not feeling that one for big show. He's going to show Rusev exactly what he learned in sensitivity training. I could care less. Rusev and Lana are out, and... Oh, sorry, Lana. She insults Christopher Columbus and the Atlanta Braves. Okay. I feel like she's like a month late for that Atlanta Braves insult, but it's probably more just because it's the hometown and you always insult the hometown. If you're a heel, I know how it works. Anyway, um, Rusev versus Big Show starts, and I'm not even going to talk about the match itself, but the finish, Rusev locks in the accolade and Henry comes out and gets on the ropes. So Rusev lets go of the accolade and knocks show right off and then he locks the accolade in again but henry interferes this time rusev gets cornered by henry and show and he gets knocked out with the uh, like wmd or whatever he's calling that punch big show has that sort of punch that's his finishing move since he was feuding with mayweather and he used that to knock out uh rusev kind of stupid in my opinion because there was really no reason for for mark henry to interfere but I think it's because they want to have a match at Hell in a Cell. That's my guess. That way, Mark Henry can't I mean, can't interfere. But anyway, we have Sheamus versus Miz, a rematch of last week, and there's a We Want Sandow chant. Too bad, audience, because Sandow isn't a wrestler. I don't know who this Damien Sandow is. All I know is that Damien Mizdow is very entertaining take that. But anyway, um, Sheamus gets counted out because he's looking for Miz under the ring, and Miz rolled under the ring, got all the way to the other side, rolled back into the ring to beat out the 10 count. So he's beaten Sheamus two weeks in a row now. I wonder if he's going to win the title. I really hope he does, but at the same point, I don't. Because when he had the Intercontinental title, he kept losing it real fast. Come on, WWE. Anyway, they're divas backstage, and they're being divas, you know. Come back from the commercial break, there's a six diva tag match. Um, it was Natalia, Brie, Naomi versus Cameron, Nikki, and some other diva. When you came back from the commercial, the bad divas were already out there. And I don't even think, I didn't even watch, to be honest. <laughs> I saw that it was on, and I'm like, Ugh. Because you know going in that instead of, you know, going with the Naomi versus Cameron feud, they're going to target the Brie versus Nikki feud. And of course, they did. Um, there's some female who's not in the company at ringside. I have no earthly idea who she was. None at all. They said she was like a fashion designer. 
and she was on The Real Housewives of some weird place. I don't know. I've never seen her, so whatever. Uh, the Face Divas won in three minutes, and the announcers kept saying how great it must feel for Brie to finally get her revenge. I'm like, what? If that's the end of the feud, I'm going to be mad. And I don't even like the feud. But that was a stupid way to just drop the feud. Very stupid. I really just give them a one-on-one -on -one match next week on Raw. Okay, give them like ten minutes. Have Nikki do something douchey. Have Brie win. Just end the feud then. But if this is the end of the feud tonight on Raw, I will be mad because they put so much time into this feud. And it can't just end like that. It can't. Just don't. I know nobody cares about it, but you can't end a feud like that. You can't. Anyway, there's a Cena interview backstage, and he gets up to the crowd, and I really wasn't feeling this Cena interview. I think the problem, I don't like Cena, but he came right after a Divas match, and I'm gonna be honest, my, my interest was gone. <laughs> it was just, hmm... And then there was another Prey Wyatt promo, but this one was about him. And then when they came back from the promo, Michael Cole said they're all let loose now. So I'm really not thinking they split. I don't think they're splitting up. I, again, I seriously think this is just to build to, to after Hell in a Cell so they can feud with Dolph Ziggler or, or Sheamus, somebody. I, I don't think they're breaking up, personally. It's, it's just to waste time until somebody is ready to challenge them. Just my thought. John Cena and Dean Ambrose come out, and the Authority is at ringside, and then Seth comes out, and then Orton comes out, and then Kane comes out. <sighs> and it's like, okay. And there's only like 10 minutes to this match. And really, it was really boring, I'm not even gonna lie. It's just, I don't like the, the contract on a, a pole thing. That was really stupid. But all hell breaks loose, and Dean sneaks a win. Thank goodness. But, now at the same time, we have John Cena versus Randy Orton for like the thousandth time on pay-per-view. I would have preferred. <laughs> and this is going to sound stupid. Cena versus Rollins, Ambrose versus Orton. Ambrose wins, Cena loses to Rollins. And it would have been like the the literal new new guys rising up. I think that would have been a good idea, but I know why they're doing it. They still want to have Rollins and Ambrose as the big feud, which is all good. They're probably going to sneak Kane in there, probably. Because Kane doesn't have a match, and he's got to cheat somehow. Then we're going to have Orton versus Cena as the physical embodiment of their feud, which was, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, one of the biggest feuds of the last 10 years. I, I have to look to see what year it was to make sure 10 was okay. Basically, we have the new, well, the next generation, we have the old generation. And then I realized... Everything that's going on on the authority is going on on the not authority. Bear with me, okay? Orton and Rollins are now like feuding. Cena and Ambrose are now feuding. And they all hate each other. Here's what they should do they should make a third team when Roman Reigns comes back. That way, it'll be like three alliances feuding off with each other, and I saw my eyes get all wide for that. I was like, ooh. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This was a pretty good Raw. Thought a lot different than last week, which I liked. But anyway, uh, probably not much. That was very missable. But like, If you missed this Raw, you didn't miss that much, really. But I'm just going to wrap it up. Peace out, Skillets.